Kia ora koutou katoa, haere mai, ko Michelle Uriaroa ho, and thank you so much for watching. So, it's been a minute since I've made a video for our channel, uh, but uh, my sister from another mister, the indelible Riggs Landy, has been making some superb material to keep us going, so if you haven't already seen her videos, be sure to check them out. So I'm going to get straight into it, um, but I'll just let you know I've had to write everything down because what I want to discuss today uh, is quite complex. So New Zealand have done exactly what we expected and unanimously voted for the SOP 59 Amendment, uh, self-ID, and the so-called Conversion Practices Prohibition Bill. You know, truth be told, uh, we all knew that these bills would be voted through despite any opposition. But to let the opportunity to have our say on these bills pass by is just simply unthinkable for Manawahine Kōrero, which is why we made submissions to oppose them. Um, so if you haven't already, be sure to check out our submissions. The videos are uploaded onto our channel. And that way you get an idea about our particular cultural point of view regarding the harmful and damaging consequences we believe you know, both these conflicting legislative changes will have for hapu. So as I was saying, our expectation was that Parliament, New Zealand Parliament that is, would absolutely vote yes to both these bills. And that's precisely what happened. Now, while that may seem a defeatist position to take, there is good reason for that, and so I'm going to explain that now. So, what is apparent to me is that it seems no matter how often we speak about the dangers of medical transition, the conflation of sex and gender, violent men and women's prisons, men and women's sports, the fact that humans can't change sex, and so on and so on, it all seems to fall on deaf ears, and I'm talking about with decision makers. Rinse and repeat. And it's been this way for years now. So I'm thinking there must be something that we're missing here, particularly because, you know, the argument for transgenderism, it's a load of deluded rubbish. So for, for the past few weeks, I've been taking a closer look at the Fourth Industrial Revolution, the World Economic Forum, and cults like Terrorism and the Arcus Foundation. And today, I want to talk a bit about the Fourth Industrial Revolution and why I think the broader conversation regarding our opposition to transgender ideation needs to magnify and incorporate it. So what is the Fourth Industrial Revolution? Well, first a quick background. The architect of the Fourth Industrial Revolution is Klaus Schwab, and he is founder and executive chairman of the World Economic Forum. The forum engages the foremost political, business, cultural, and other leaders of society to shape global, regional, and industry agendas. The forum also has a strategic partnership with the UN. Important to note, the Fourth Industrial Revolution is already upon us. It's here, even if we do not recognise it at first. The extravagant array of technology that was conceptualised is now realised or is now being realised and referred to as disruptive technology, which is far more invasive than just high tech. So an example of high tech versus disruptive tech um, is the difference between genetic modification, which we know has been used for decades in agriculture, versus genetic editing, which is still in its experimental phase, pretty much, but is instrumental technology to things like cloning, gene therapy, and mRNA vaccine development. Now, if you head on over to the World Economic Forum website, this is how Klaus Schwab explains the Fourth Industrial Revolution. The Fourth Industrial Revolution represents a fundamental change in the way we live, work, and relate to one another. It is a new chapter in human development enabled by extraordinary, that should read technological, advances commensurate with those of the first, second, and third industrial revolutions. These advances are merging the physical, digital, and biological worlds in ways that create both huge promise and potential peril. The speed, breadth, and depth of this revolution is forcing us to rethink how countries develop, how organizations create value, and even what it means to be human. 
The fourth industrial revolution is about more than just technology-driven change. It is an opportunity to help everyone, including leaders, policymakers, and people from all income groups and nations to harness converging technologies in order to create an inclusive, human-centered future. The real opportunity is to look beyond technology and find ways to give the greatest number of people the ability to positively impact their families, organisations and communities. End quote. Now, I'd like to read out some bullet points made in an Australian 2017 three-part graphic series called Sex, War and Robots. I'll start by pointing out that nothing has influenced, shaped and advanced human evolution more than sex and war. By 2025, the US military will have more combat robots than human soldiers. Quote by John Bassett, former UK intelligence office. 40% of men would purchase a sex robot. 2016 survey. In 2017, Dubai deployed its first robotic police officer. Fast forward to today, they've got more than just one. South Korea has a machine gun that can lock onto a human target three kilometres away and open fire. No human operator is required. In 2017, a sex robot was built capable of simulating an orgasm. By 2045, we will all be living in a society with two, with, sorry, with two new species, robots and cyborgs. And experts predict they'll be our legal, loving husbands and wives. Soon, fetishes will have no limits. They mean boundaries. Experts have warned that in the future... It will be impossible to stop people from creating sex robots that are exact replicas of someone they know without their consent. In 2007, a robotic cannon malfunctioned during a training exercise and in just one-eighth of a second, one-eighth of a second, Farno, killed nine soldiers and injured 15 more. Technicians said if it was a software error, They have no idea why it happened. Now, I'm going to put the links to the three-part series in the description below. And of course, I encourage you all to watch. But I should point out that since the series was made in 2017, uh, the stats provided will have progressed well beyond those stated. Okay, so now I'm going to make the link or try to. So what does transgenderism have to do with the fourth industrial revolution umbrella? So in the opening to a 2016 World Economic Forum mini-documentary, the following statement is narrated. The very idea of human being some sort of natural concept is really going to change. Our bodies will be so high-tech, we won't be able to really distinguish between what's natural and what's artificial. End quote. When New Zealand passed their so-called Conversion Practices Prohibition Bill in December 2021 last year, they in fact legalised the dissociation and dismemberment of children's bodies and with it their evolutionary capacity. When they passed the Self-ID Amendment on 15 February this year, 2022, they legalised identity fraud. In essence, what both these bills have done is kick-started the shift from a human-centred society to the idea that a non-human-centred society is possible in law. The overarching aim of which I claim is to phase out much of human life. In other words, transgender ideology is intended to help acclimate society into accepting the blurring of lines between what is natural human and what is synthetic without us even realizing that that is what they are doing the consequences of which are immeasurable now while indigenous rights women's rights children's rights lgb rights are absolutely paramount 
the engineers of the fourth industrial revolution do not regard us as individual groups of the human species. They actually regard us all as the one species within a broader group of what they consider other species under the fourth industrial, uh, sorry, under the fourth industrial, start again, under the fourth industrial revolution umbrella. This is probably why we can say ad nauseum that humans cannot change sex and babies are not assigned female or male at birth, but observed. And they will continue to ignore us because as far as the fourth industrial revolution is concerned, humans can and will change sex or the fourth industrial revolution will have failed. And far too many obscenely wealthy men and world and business leaders and corporations have invested too much money and time only to have it all come crashing down around them. Now, if you think transgenderism is a broad church with many tentacles, well, the fourth industrial revolution makes it look like a first year apprentice. I trust I need not explain how these unethical technological developments run at complete odds with Tiao and everything that underpins our culture. This is precisely why language truly matters. And I don't only say that as someone from a colonised people whose language was subjugated and contaminated, colonised, but it is through language that we are able to define ourselves and the world around us, thus keeping a tether to what is natural and authentically human. We cannot surrender to language that seeks to dehumanise us, not ever. There is no such thing as transgender. In our culture, we don't even have a word uh, that means or that translates to transgender or gender. You may have heard people use takatapui uh, for transgender, gay, lesbian and bisexual. But in truth, that word has actually been co-opted and reframed to suit the transgender agenda. We've never, never even had a, a common or a native word for gay, lesbian or bi. And when I say native word, I mean native to our language. Um, because regardless of your sexuality, you are always either wahine or tane, woman or man. The fourth industrial revolution is colonisation on a gargantuan scale. And while we're busy buying into their propaganda that seeks to divide us or trying to find a balance within the trans discussion, you know, so as not to upset anyone or raging on a purity politics mission, you know, this shit gets to advance at breakneck speed with each passing hour. So please, everyone, do take the time to check out the links that I've shared and discussed here today and consider what I am saying and why it is so important that we start talking more about the fourth industrial revolution and how it relates to transgenderism, transhumanism and the importance of understanding the impacts of exponential growth of disruptive technology taking place today right under our noses. Oh, and I'll put up both links to the campaign to stop killer robots and the campaign to stop sex robots. So you can take a look. All right, almost there. So now for housekeeping. I've added more stock to our online stores, so feel free to check it out. We now have available our He Wahine He Whenua t-shirts. And that shorthand for it is by woman and by land that the people are given life. So it's our way of acknowledging biological reality and that which gives us life and makes us human and is fundamental to our existence, our whakapapa. Okay. So also available in store are our Wahine Adult Human Female and Tane Adult Human Male t-shirts. Many thanks to Kelly J for granting us her blessing to use the tagline that has become synonymous with her significant body of work. And thanks also to our wonderfully patient and generous graphic design artists. Tr truly appreciate your support. So even though I've barely touched the sides on this topic, I'll leave it there for now. I'm sure I've given you all enough to mull over. Uh, thanks again, everyone, for tuning in. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. But until next time, noho tuturu, noho tangata. Stay real, stay human. Ka kite.